Hello my friends, welcome to the Wicked Bitter channel. I'm Travis, thank you for checking out this video. If you're somebody new to this channel and you love pro wrestling, which if you've clicked this video, you have to love pro wrestling. There's no reason why you would watch this video other than the fact that you love WWE and you love pro wrestling. And if that's the case, which I know it is, hit subscribe on this channel. You will not regret it. We have a community that keeps growing every single week. We post videos every single week. We review Raw. We review SmackDown, sometimes NXT, but most definitely all the time the PLEs. And today's video, we're talking about what happened on Monday Night Raw. So straddle up, settle in. It's going to be a good one. We're not going to talk about everything that happened on Monday Night Raw. Just the key moments that I like to go over because some, some big things were cleared up on Monday Night Raw this week. And we have to talk about it. The show starts with Gunther, comes out, talks about... Um, Damian Priest talks about how he meant everything he said last week, calling him a bum, calling him trash, calling the crowd trash, which eventually call it, it makes Damian Priest come out and confront him. Priest looks like he's about to say something, and then he strikes Gunther in the face, and these two brawl a little bit in the ring, and then we, they get, eventually get split up by security and referees and, and Adam Pierce and everybody who wants to come out and stop all these from always happening, it happened. And then we get a little bit of a mini brawl. You know, they keep going back after one another after being split up here and there. And it's the typical thing you see a lot when they try to build these types of feuds. Um, I liked it. We 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 go to commercial, we come back, these two are brawling in the backstage area. Um, I'm gonna be honest. At first, I wasn't too into this match, right? I I, I kind of felt like it wasn't really being built properly, but for some reason, I don't know if it was just because the crowd was super hot in Green Bay, but I'm, I'm thinking, like, they did okay with this. I'm all right with this. I'm okay with the Priest and Gunther thing, and they've even made it to the point where I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit on the fence about if I think Priest will win at SummerSlam or not now, which is a good thing, because before, I was 100%, no, Gunther's going to win, Gunther's going to win, but they've built it, to their credit, they've built it good enough where... I'm starting to doubt it a little bit. I'm starting to think, wait, what if Damian Priest beats Gunther at SummerSlam? I now think that there's a possibility that that happens, which is a very good thing for WWE. Gunther was talking about how it might the pressure of holding a championship and leading this company might be too too much for Damian Priest's shoulder to take. He called him trash, street trash. Priest came out. I mean, the crowd was hot. They popped big for Priest. So I I, I think. They've done what they needed to do with this right now, with this build. I think we actually got a pretty cool match that I'm looking forward to, Gunther versus Priest. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm kind of leaning a little more towards Priest on this one. I'm not going to lie. I think I, I, I think I'm going to make a video of my predictions on SummerSlam. That's definitely going to come out. But as of right now, I'm leaning more towards Damian Priest winning this match. And I'll explain why in a video a little later on. We got to mention, you know, the glaze is real here on Wicked Bitter. We glaze hardcore. We glaze Braun Breaker. That is our guy. If you're new to this channel, Braun Breaker is our guy. We love Braun Breaker here, uh, and we're going to always prop him up because this man deserves a title. He deserves all the titles. He deserves everything. So uh, he had a great match with Ilya Dragunov. The crowd was fully invested. The barking, the chanting. I mean, this... This is what we wanted in the mid-card scene, right? We wanted the mid-card championship to be like this, as intense. You know, you're, you're, you're fully involved and invested in this type of feud or these types of feuds that happen in the mid-card, finally. Because for so long, the mid-card got treated like it was, uh, for instance, it got treated like it was the Women's Tag Team Champions chips currently. Like, it, it like. People will have a title and the matches don't really matter. No storylines, no no good feuds, no good matches. It's kind of fell flat. That's kind of what's going on with the Women's Tag Team Championships. Although I give them credit because they are trying with the Women's Tag Team Division. But for so long, the mid-card titles looked like that. But now, the mid-card titles, man, like it's something to fight for. It's something to to to, to get up and... and invest in you got Sami Zayn as champion you got breaker chasing after him you got Ilya chasing after it not to mention bronson reed whenever you want to throw him in there you got the whole thing with sheamus and pete dunn now like what a mid-card scene we got here especially on raw for right now uh i love this not and then also on smackdown too you could argue logan paul versus 
LA Knight for the mid-card U.S. championship, that's as big as a match as any at SummerSlam right now. And uh, WWE is doing a great job with the mid-card scene, in my opinion. And uh, it, 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 the match with Ilya Dragunov and Breaker ended by Breaker spearing Dragunov after Dragunov jumped off the apron uh, on the outside. And the match got called off. The referee um, stopped the match. Well, she didn't really stop the match. She called the match. She said Braun Breaker wins the match by, I guess, a knockout. Uh, so I feel like we're not done yet. I feel like I feel like so right now it's supposed to be Breaker versus Sammy at SummerSlam for this Intercontinental Championship. I still have a feeling this might turn into a triple threat match uh, by the time SummerSlam rolls around. I don't think Dragunov is going away easy like this. Uh, but if if it's not a triple threat and it's just a one on one match, Breaker has to win at SummerSlam. He has to. Regardless, whether it's a triple threat match or not, Breaker has to win this title. It's time. It is time for Breaker to win the Intercontinental Championship. We get a little bit of a tease backstage. You know, Rhea talks to the Judgment Day without Damian Priest. Uh, and we get a little tease of Dominic being a little jealous of what's going on with Jey Uso and Rhea, potentially. He said he's been paying attention to social media, saying that, you know, uh, Rhea was asked, or, or Jay was asked if he got Rhea's number. Rhea was asked if she's got Jay's number. They both kind of, like, like teasingly laugh about it and say yes in a way. So, Dom, you can see some signs of him being a little upset, a little jealous about it. But uh, Rhea tells him he's got nothing to worry about. She's just messing around and playing around and 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 teasing, and it's completely different than what Dom's been doing with Liv. And so we get that little thing there. And then and and then uh, Balor sticks his head up and says, "Hey, you know what you got to do? You got to face you got to face Jay. You got to beat Jay." And Rhea kind of writes it off. She says, "No, don't worry about Jay. Don't even pay attention to him. You shouldn't even be fighting him. Let's not start a war with him." She walks off, and Balor looks very upset. You're starting to see signs now where Balor is starting to get a little frustrated with Damian Priest beforehand, and now he's getting a little frustrated with Rhea Ripley. So this is definitely, we're creating the divide here where Rhea Ripley and Priest are about to go off and be the baby faces and everybody else left there and Judgment Day are all going to be the heels. So I, um, I wonder when all of this is going to happen and really go down, but as of right now, they're planting the seeds for Finn Balor to, to, to Go against Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest, and it's only a matter of time before all of this just comes crashing down, brother. So we finally get the first week where a VHS tape is not delivered to Michael Cole and Pat McAfee. Thank you. I don't know why they kept doing that over and over, but we do get a little bit of a small VHS type of vignette backstage again. This time it's with Nikki Cross. Um... They don't really say Nikki Cross, do they? they uh, Michael Cole addressed her as the witch-looking figure. I don't think they, if I don't, if I remember right, I don't think they said Nikki Cross. And honestly, her backstage vignette was super quick, and I was a little bummed out at first until they showed up later on in the night because I was like, "Is this really the only Wyatt thing we have tonight?" Where like it was nothing. It was like, you know, Uncle Howdy said, um, "Look at you, look at you," and, and then uh, you know he said they they forgot about you or. Uh, and then she just screams and like that was pretty much it and i was like okay well that was kind of short lived i was you know i look forward to these wyatt things every week and if this is all they're going to give me it's not that great but they make up for it later on we'll get into that in a little bit we get back from commercial cm punk makes his way down to the ring looks like he was rushing and i don't know why but he was flying down to that ring running and everything and uh, gets in the ring cuts a very short mini promo he got right to the point he straight up says that he is cleared for SummerSlam, and then he calls out Drew McIntyre. Hey, finally we get our answer. <laughs> I was wondering, is Punk going to get cleared for this or not? So Punk is cleared. He will be facing Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam. In my opinion, I still say they should main event the show. I don't even... I mean, they probably won't because Cody will probably face Solo in the main event, but man, the build they've done for Drew McIntyre and CM Punk, they definitely deserve to go on last, especially with this caveat added onto this. So Pierce comes out, uh, he kind of breaks up this whole thing. He says that if either men uh, lay a finger on one another before their match, they're going to be suspended, all that kind of stuff going on here. So Drew McIntyre and CM Punk cannot lay a hand on each other until SummerSlam. So, and then Pierce says he's tired of everybody going nuts. You know, there's too much chaos going on all over the show. Priest and Gunther, Punk and Drew. So he is ordering a special guest referee. And that special guest referee is none other than Seth Rollins himself. I need to ask you guys, how do we feel about this? How do we feel about uh, 
Seth Rollins being inserted into this feud, or not even the feud, but this match at SummerSlam that we've all been waiting for. He's inserted as a special guest referee. How do you feel about it? Look, I love all three men involved, but for the build that's this match has been going on for like a year now, Drew and, and Punk, I just wanted to see Punk versus Drew. And I even wanted to see it maybe like in a street fight or something. I just wanted these two to go one-on-one with each other. And uh, I guess that's not what we're going to get. We're going to get Seth Rollins. I'm not mad at it. It's not the worst thing in the world. But, uh, you know, I'm sure it'll be entertaining. It'll still be a great match, I'm sure. I'm interested to see where Seth goes. Because you know these things are never called right down the middle, even though they always say that someone's going to be impartial. Something always happens. Is, is, is Seth going to hit Drew? Is he going to hit Punk? Is he going to hit both? Or is he just going to be right down the middle? I doubt it. So, um... Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. I don't know. I, I still think Punk wins this match because he's this is his first match back for being gone for so long. His first match back was the Royal Rumble. This is his first actual singles match back. I feel like Punk's got to win this thing. I just don't know how we get there with Seth as the ref unless he gets knocked out and another ref comes out and counts to three or something. Seth ends up curb stomping Drew or something. Something is going to happen in this match. Just don't know what yet, but I have a feeling. I'm almost almost 100% sure that Punk is going to win this match. Maybe not the entire feud when it comes down to it, but definitely this match here at SummerSlam. I think we got to give it a Punk on this one. Pretty cool moment. See, this is what I was talking about before. Gable... And the Creed brothers come out after Otis teams up with Tazawa and Xavier Woods, and they lose that six-man tag team match. Very, I don't know. I, I don't know what WWE does sometimes. This is a weird, weird, weird booking decision there. But uh, they team up. They end up losing the match. And then Creed brothers come out with Chad Gable. And Gable uh, pretty much talks smack <laughs> to Otis and Tazawa, telling them that, you know, last chance join their team. The Wyatts are out there running around. They could be targeting them too. Uh, so you want to be on their side. And pretty much Otis says, no, not going to happen. My answer is still no. The Creed brothers and Gable end up uh, ganging up and beating up on Tazawa and Otis. Um, they were outside of the ring. Otis is with the Creed brothers. Chad Gable gives the brothers chairs like they're going to assault uh, Otis on the outside. And then the Wyatt stuff starts happening. The lights go out. The piano key starts playing. The whole crew, other than Bo Dallas and Uncle Howdy, show up on the stage. You got Dexter. You got Gacy. You got Rowan. And you got Nikki Cross are all on the stage. And the Creed brothers are looking up there waiting. And then Gable, who's left in the ring by himself, Uncle Howdy appears behind Chad Gable. Gable turns around when Uncle Howdy says, there you are. And then he hits him with the sister Abigail, and then we cut to commercial. Um, a lot of this Wyatt stuff felt a little rushed tonight. I liked it. I mean, it was fine. It, it was enjoyable. I'm happy to see some action finally from the Wyatts here. Uncle Howdy looks a thousand times better now than he did back when he was with uh, Bray Wyatt. Uncle Howdy as, him, as this now, the way he looks now. I love it. It looks amazing to me. So very cool. You get to see Uncle Howdy in some action. Um, you know, hits the sister Abigail. He's going to keep that that move alive. I love that. The whole thing was cool. It felt a little rushed. I could have dealt. I could have done with more Wyatt stuff or or something a little more serious. But we'll take it, right? It's it, it beats them just standing around doing nothing every single week. Finally, we see them do something, even though it was just Uncle Howdy who did something. But Maybe we get a, maybe we get a six man tag at SummerSlam. I'm feeling like we got this going. This is going to happen. I um, I don't think Otis helps. I don't think any of that. I think it's Creed Brothers and Gable versus. I don't know. Do we do Gacy Loomis and 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 uh, Eric Rowan, and then we just have uh, Uncle Howdy and Nikki Cross on the outside watching the match? Maybe that's what we get, or maybe we just throw Uncle Howdy in the match. Either way, I think that should happen at SummerSlam. I don't think it should be a pre-show. It should be on the main card. But either it's going to be great no matter what happens. We get Rhea Ripley in the ring with Dom uh, cutting a promo. She calls out Liv Morgan. She says, hey, if you want Dom, then come and get him. And then Liv Morgan appears in the crowd behind the ring. She's like in the stands somewhere, and she's talking back and forth with 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 Rhea. She tells uh, Liv says that she feel she's got feelings for Dom, and she knows that he's got feelings for her. And it's because Dom doesn't gorgeous guys like Dom don't like girls like Rhea. He gorgeous guys like Dom likes girls like Liv. I don't know. It's it's it high school stuff. Either way, what it comes down to is. 
Liv Morgan wants to hear Dom say those three words, and I'm assuming she wants him to say, I love you, but that's not what he says. He says the exact opposite. Dom yells at Liv Morgan, says he hates her, starts going off. He says a bunch of stuff in Spanish that I don't even know what he said, but it's not good stuff. You can tell it's all negative things. He, he He's just laying it all out there, telling her to leave him alone. He hates her. He's ruined everything for her. her just this whole thing. You end up cutting to live in the crowd. She's like crying. She starts to walk away slowly, turns around, leaves. And Rhea's just smiling. She's joyful in the ring. She ends up licking Dominic's face and kissing him on the cheek. And then they both leave together. So maybe all's well with Rhea and Dom. But I still think... It's not all good. I feel like something's going to happen here. I feel like Rhea is going to tease and continue to tease Dom about the flirting with Jay. I think something is going to happen here with that. I don't think Liv... I mean, I don't think it's over with Liv. I don't think it's over with, with Rhea and Dom. I think... It looks like that way right now. I think Dom is being led to believe that everything's all good with Rhea. But I feel like Rhea has another plan in mind. And it's going to come out probably at SummerSlam is what I'm guessing. Last segment of the night, we got JD McDonough and Finn Balor, the tag team champions versus Sami Zayn and Jey Uso. Um, great match. Long story short, Jey Uso and Sami Zayn win this match. At the very end of this, Braun Breaker shows up. He spears Sami Zayn out of his shoes, basically. And then he's left standing tall again for like the second or third week in a row. Raw goes off the air with Braun Breaker looking like an absolute beast standing tall, and he gets the last laugh at the end of the show. Look, this is what I'm saying. We glaze Braun Breaker here on Wicked Bitter, okay? Braun Breaker is the future of this company. We all can agree on that. But he got he has to win this Intercontinental Championship. He's looked too dominant. He already took an L. That hurt him a little bit. Now he's looking great at the end of the show every single week. I do have a thing, though. I do wonder, I do wonder if because Jay and Sammy beat the tag champions... I wonder if they get a championship match in the next couple of weeks here because the next couple of weeks they're going to be on sci-fi and maybe they need people to actually have a reason to go search for Raw to watch because it's not on USA. So maybe they have a tag team championship match and here's what I think might happen. What if Liv, in anger towards Dom, costs them the tag team championships? It's just a thought. But that would mean Jay and Sammy become tag champs while Sammy is the IC champion. And then you could have Breaker beat Sammy for the Intercontinental Championship. That way you can have Sammy and Jay as tag champs. I think that could work. I think we could do something like that. Liv does it out of anger because Dom rejected her. I could see that. If not, then I could see Dom. <laughs> I could see JD and, and Balor winning anyway. It's just, we can go either way here. Maybe it doesn't happen at all, but I think that'd be a pretty cool thing to add to the story. All right, guys, you let me know what you think about tonight's or Monday's episode of Raw. Um, I hope you all have a great week. I'm going to put out another video here. I would like to do another email video. So if you're watching this video and you would like to send in an email, wickedbittermedia at gmail.com. I'll put it in the video. I'll put it in the description. Email me. I will make another email video in the next couple of days. I will answer all the emails you have. Just send them in. Let me know what you think about tonight's Raw. The email could be about anything WWE related. Whatever you want to talk about, throw it out there. I'll make a video. I'll answer it. And uh, that's what we do here on Wicked Bitter. So if you're not subscribed, that's another reason for you to subscribe. We take care of our people here, man. We all want to talk. I'm not here to just put out videos. That's not what I'm doing here. I want to put out videos, and I want to talk to my people. You guys are my people. We're all each other's people here. This is our community. This is our channel here on Wicked Bitter, and uh, I love talking in the comments. I love talking in the emails. So, um, yeah, for sure. Send them in. We'll do another video. But until we eat again, my friends, have a good rest of your week. I will talk to you on the next video. And as always, stay bitter.